Hello everyone, my name is Mohinda Ramnarayan and welcome to another exciting lesson geared towards helping you improve your command of the English language arts. Today's lesson is intended to help you write better structured, well formatted reports. So today we'll be looking at what is a report, the parts of a report, using transitional words in a report, and we also look at one example of a report. What is a report? A report is a factual piece written for a clear purpose to a particular audience. Information in a report is presented in a clearly structured format. Information is also easy to locate and follow. This is quite different from a narrative descriptive. Reports contain only factual information. There is no opinions, emotions, or feelings. The structure of a report. A, a report, any report has this basic structure, an introduction, the body, and the conclusion. In your introduction, you summarize the information that you are going to present in your report. What happened? Who did it involve? Whom, where, and when? The body of the report contains two to three paragraphs dealing with details of what happened in a chronological order. You use only factual information and a formal tone. You use appropriate transitional words and phrases to link your ideas and the sequence of events as they occurred during the incident or event. In your conclusion, there's a brief discussion of what happened at the end. Have you ever been to the Emperor Valley Zoo? Well, if you haven't, I'm sure that you could encourage your teacher to take you on a field trip to the Emperor Valley Zoo. Today's prompt deals with writing a report about a field trip to the, to the Emperor Valley Zoo. The information the students are asked to include would be details about the date and the time of the visit, what you saw during the visit, and how the trip ended. Here, I have a sample introduction template for writing a report on a field trip. This template can be used for any field trip that you go on during the, your time at school. In it, you have to include the information, such as the date, the, the day, date, month, year, the class you were in, the name of your school, the name of the place you visited. Additionally, you will include the name of your teacher, the time you left the school, and the time you returned to school. So here, we have included the information on the field trip that some students of the Central Primary School went on to the Emperor Valley Zoo. On Friday, 7 February 2020, the Standard 5 class of Central Primary School went on a field trip to the Emperor Valley Zoo, Zoo Road, Port of Spain. The students, accompanied by their teacher, Mr. Marvin Lee, left the school compound at 8.30 a.m. and returned from the field trip at 2.30 p.m. This is our introduction to our report. Next, we will look at the body of the report. Remember, in your body, you, c you have a well-sequenced chronological detail of the events that occurred during the trip. After a journey of about 45 minutes, we arrived at the zoo. Upon arrival, we were instructed by Mr. Lee to proceed single file from the bus and purchase tickets at the entrance. Each student purchased a ticket at a cost of $15, after which we entered the zoo. Upon entry, we visited the reptile enclosure. There, we saw iguanas, snakes, and other lizards. Next, we proceeded to the aquarium, where we saw different species of fish and aquatic animals. After this display, we visited the giraffe enclosure. There, we were able to see the giraffes up close and feed them using a cup provided by one of the zookeepers, Ms. Sharon Rose. If you remember earlier, I spoke about transitional words and phrases. These are words and phrases that are used to link our ideas and events in our report. They help our report to flow and add to the overall formal tone of the report, making them easier to read. Here, we see transitional words were used to link events in, in the report. Upon arrival, after which, upon entry, next, after this display, and there, these are all transitional words that we can use in our reports. Additionally, we can use the words next, firstly, lastly, secondly, and so on. 
I am sure that your teacher would have done other transitional words and phrases with you. Following this, we visited the enclosures with the monkeys, lions, and tigers. The monkeys were eating fruit and the lions were asleep. Finally, we visited the displays with the birds. There, we saw various species of birds, parrots, scarlet iris, kokriko, macaws, and the gray African parrot. At this point, we, met, we were met by another zookeeper, Mr. Roger Ali, who explained briefly the zoo's project to reint reintroduce the pink flamingo and the gold and blue macaws to the wild in Trinidad. Remember to use your punctuation marks carefully. In another lesson, we would have learned about the use of the colon and commas. Our conclusion. Our conclusion gives a brief overview of how the activity, in this case, the field trip ended. Our tour of the zoo concluded at approximately 1 p.m. After this, we ate our lunches near the cafeteria area. We boarded the bus at around 1.30 p.m. and following a head count by Mr. Lee, we returned to school. The return journey took about an hour. Upon arrival at the school compound, we were dismissed for the day. So in summary, today we would have looked at a report. What is a report? We would have looked at the three main parts of a report, the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. We would have looked at what information needs to be presented in each part of the report. And we would also have looked at the use of transitional words and phrases in a report. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you again soon. Hello everyone, my name is Mohinda Ramnarayan and welcome to another exciting lesson geared towards helping you improve your command of the English language arts. In today's lesson, we will look at spelling, more specifically adding ing to words. So before I begin today's lesson, there's an exciting exercise for you for which you will need a pencil and a piece of paper. So I'll give you some time to go and get yourself organized. When adding ing to words, there are three basic rules that we follow. We will begin by looking at rule one. Rule one, for words that end in a silent letter, silent e, we drop the e and then add ing. For example, come becomes coming. C-O-M-E, we drop the e and we add ing to give C-O-M-I-N-G. The same happens for the word revise, bubble, and trouble. Remember, when adding ing to words ending with the silent e, we drop the e and then add ing. If we were to use these words in a sentence, the children were bubbling with excitement because their friends were coming over to spend time revising some troubling words. By using the rule accurately, you help to produce more interesting sentences that someone would like to read. Rule two, for one syllable words that end in a consonant, end in consonant, vowel, consonant, except where the word ends in the letters X and W, we double the last letter and add ING. The word run, R-U-N. We have the consonant R followed by the vowel U, and the consonant N. So we double the N and then we add ING to produce running. R U N N I N G. The same happens for the word stop. S T O P. Stop. T is a consonant, O is a vowel, and P is a consonant. So we double the end consonant P and then add ING to produce stopping. S-T-O-P-P-I-N-G. P -P -I 
and G. I'm sure that all of you will be able to guess the correct spelling for the word sit by now, because we have the same pattern being repeated, consonant, vowel, consonant. We double the T and then add ING to give us sitting, S-I-T-T-I-N-G. If we were to use these words in a sentence, we would have, we were sitting near the tree when we saw the prefix stopping the students who were running. I'm sure that this has happened at your school before. And by using the spelling rule correctly, you can convey the information in your sentence accurately. And finally, we have rule three. Rule three says, for mo most other words, including words that end in Y, we add ing and we make no changes. So the word rain, we simply add ing to produce raining. R-A-I-N-I-N-G. Send, sending, S-E-N-D-I-N-G. Worry, worrying, W-O-R-R-Y-I-N-G. Notice, for other spelling rules, we change the Y to I and then we add the inflectional ending. However, that does not happen here when we add I-N-G. We keep the Y at the end and then we add ing in a sentence these words would read there's no hurry sending the umbrella i'm not worrying about it raining today so here's time for a fun activity that i mentioned earlier i have some words up on the screen and i want you to add ing to spell these words correctly i'll give you a few minutes but don't take too long Now, let's check your answers. Love becomes loving. L-O-V-I-N-G. Poke becomes poking. P-O-K-I-N-G. Remember, these two words had silent E's at the end. So, we drop the E and then we add I-N-G. Laugh. L-A-U-G-H-I-N-G. Mend. M-E-N-D-I-N-G. These words did not follow the pattern in rule two. So we simply added I-N-G to them. And lastly, we have the word nap. Nap becomes napping. N-A-P-P-I-N-G. Remember, when a word has the pattern, consonant, vowel, consonant, we double the end consonant and then add ing. Congrats, I am sure that you would have gotten all the words correct today. As we conclude, let's recap what we learned today. Today, we looked at adding ing to words to spell them correctly. We saw three rules. Rule one, for words that end in a silent letter, that is the letter isn't pronounced, we drop the e and add ing. For one syllable words that end in the pattern consonant, vowel, consonant, except where the word ends in the letters X and W, we double the last letter and then add ing. And finally, for most other words, including words that end in Y, we simply add ing and make no changes to the words. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you again soon.